Ilya Teporia told Max Holloway, if you're expecting me to put up the belt, if they're declaring you number one contender, that if that is how this works, if somebody else can declare it, and I have got to accept it, and I have to put up my belt. Now, see, that's an interesting point by Teporia. Be before you yawn and stretch, you need to understand, it's an interesting point that Teporia to fight him has to put up his belt. Why is that interesting? Well, why can't he fight him 147 pounds? Why can't he? Ryan Garcia did it days ago. It's the hottest topic out there. It's great for business. Didn't affect anything. Car subject to change in California means something very different than it does in other states. The posting at each door, what it means when your main event now changes, title fight to non-title fight, what it means in California is drastically different than what it means in any other state that I know of. Now, there's 50 jurisdictions. I don't have track of all the rules. What I'm sharing with you is we now have evidence that a non-title match between the right two guys does not produce a negative or a different night of business. We at least can make that argument, can't we? So why can Deporia not fight him at 147, do the fight, do everything you would like, he just doesn't put up the belt? Why can't he? It's what he is saying. He said, or... Oh, and the answer, by the way, the answer is very important. Because you have the belt, that's not how we do things. If our champion fights, it's for the belt. But not every time. Daniel Cormier and Anderson Silva fought. It wasn't for the belt. You guys remember that? They even made the right weight class. Do you guys remember that? Do you remember why the belt was not up? They made the right weight? Why was the belt not up? Do you remember? A trivia question. Leave an answer below. UFC 200. You can even look it up and try to cheat. Now let me ask you this. Max has a belt and a title. So all Tapori is saying is I will put my belt up and I will fight you. Otherwise, I will only fight you. Unless, of course, you put your belt up. And if the reason I must put my belt up is because I'm the champion. Okay, fair enough. Then your belt must also be up because you are the champion. Is there a different argument? And Tepori's looking around the room. If there's anything here I'm missing, says Tepori, go ahead and throw it at me. We're going to see, though, if it applies to you as well. It's a very intriguing argument. Only for conversation reasons. Don't think that I don't understand the silliness. Don't think that I don't even understand that Tepori is just trying to be silly. I get the whole thing. I just happen to like it because look at the spot that we're in. I mean, what a fascinating position. Okay, Max Holloway was the odd man out. He was the odd man out at 145 pounds. He couldn't get the title shot. He had more title shots than anybody still active within the division. Not just trying to get the title. Even when he had the title, he was defending it. He signed and walked in that ring four titles more times than anybody in that division. They didn't know what to do with him. In fact, for the first time ever, the way they built a contender is to have him stay away from Max Holloway. That contender is Ilya Teporia. When Max Holloway was announced for Justin Gaethje, neither Max nor Justin had asked for the fight, and neither did any of you. There was not a headline anywhere. There was no beef, no backstory for those two to fight. All of a sudden... Max starts to be in a position where not only is he not the odd man out, he's the hottest commodity in the room. Now, to keep that, he's going to have to win. But if he does, he absolutely has a golden ticket on number one contendership. The question becomes, does he stay at 155 and cash that in? Does he go back to 145, turn that golden ticket in? Oh, and by the way, he will be the BMF champion. He'll go from odd man out to a champion with a golden ticket to fight for a world title. That's exactly what happened. And the reason I tell you that way is because look at Ilya Teporia. Now we want to see that fight. Oh my goodness, Ilya and Max can't even imagine anything different. But Ilya, while stopping the pound for pound goat, normally that would be enough. Well, it was almost too much. Ilya didn't, didn't come out of anybody's mouth except O'Malley. And O'Malley would have done it. By the way, he just saw the writing on the wall. He knew that Marab was promised. He knew we weren't going in that direction yet. He just wanted to plant the seed. But from the time that O'Malley said it, at UFC 299 in Miami, 
until Max beat Justin Gaethje, nobody lined up to fight Deporia. As a matter of fact, we had what could have been the number one contenders match, which was Ortega versus Rodriguez. And the winner of that, all they had to do was declare themselves number one contender. And it wasn't a Sandhagen moment. It was not a, a drop the ball moment. It was a very clear, I'm not going to call him out moment. What a fascinating time we're in. Think about it in that perspective. What a fascinating time we are in. And what a difference a day makes. And by the way, I would see no reason that Max would not have to put up the belt. Now, there's something to be said for precedence, and the precedence of BMF does not favor me. It doesn't, it doesn't favor me. What I want is whenever the BMF champion fights, the BMF belt is up. I, I don't understand why it would be treated as any other title. And I'm open to it. If you tell me it's going to be treated as a different title, if you tell me the discussions and or the arguments that are going to take place, I will happily adhere and follow them, but I haven't been told that. By example, every BMF fight is scheduled for five rounds, like a championship match. The BMF fight is called a title match, the title being BMF. The title is being represented in the form of a belt. I'm not seeing the distinction, but I will admit when George Masvidal, who without question was the BMF champion, and he was in this exact scenario, he went against Kamar Usman, and his belt being George's was not up for grabs. And when George took that belt and that championship, and he walked in into a main event scheduled for five rounds, just like a title fight, opposite Colby Covington, that belt was not up for grabs. So, we have a precedence, I do get it. George never was able to figure out why they didn't defend the belt. I don't know that that's a mistake that Max is going to make. I don't know that Max's manager and team are, but maybe they won't. Maybe they won't. But, what an interesting topic. Oh, and by the way, I don't know that I want it to happen. I like the idea of Max staying where he is. Max versus Justin, I will tell you one interesting thing. We have never had a fight. Feel free to correct me right in the comment section below. We have never had a fight to this magnitude that we have celebrated to this degree. The only fight that we've ever celebrated to this degree is Griffin versus Bonner. By the way, I mean, that is what rare air this Max and Gaethje in that final 10, as good as that fight was, it was very dominant. It was one side. It was that final 10 seconds. It was Max taking the ultimate risk and calling for it. You and me toe to toe right here we go. But it changed everything. Changes history, changes the way the fight will be talked about. But it is the only fight of that magnitude to be celebrated to this degree where a rematch has not even been discussed. A rematch between Justin and Max has not even been discussed. And I don't hate the idea of Max staying up and inserting himself in the Connor Chandler business. I will take on the winner. I know Connor would like that. I know Chandler would like that. Question is, can Connor make 55? And does he think he's going to get back? I mean, there's a lot of things that are interesting there. And even though Ortega did not pull a Sandhagen, but did not declare himself number number one contender, I have spoke to Brian Ortega. He will take the Tapora fight. That was a respectful move that he was attempting to do. He will take the Tapora fight. As much as you guys want to see Max versus Tapora, and you go, oh, that's the only fight for him. Well, in some, in some regards. But you're still playing... Checkers, what, what do you want to do with Volk? Do you want to just push Volk out? Volk's out of the conversation. We'll pull Volk in against Max for the, the billionth time. It's, it's one of these spots where it's not quite as clear as you think. And Taporia, while just having a little bit of fun, Taporia is no more serious about Max having to put up the belt than O'Malley was about I'm coming to Spain, we're going to do a bowl ring, and I'm going to fight you for champ champ status after my first title defense. Like, like, everybody knows that's just not the way that this is going to be done. But that doesn't mean that their arguments are losing arguments. And there is very good, I'm not going to tell you what it is, there is extremely good reason why Max will want that belt up for grabs. His belt. Max will want to put that belt up, whoever he fights next. There's very good reason. Masvidal could never figure out what that reason was. 
Now the question is, can Max? Because I'll tell I'll tell Tapori right now. If it's up to Max, he'll put up the belt. 